St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from three donors. The first is Connie from North Bay, Ontario, in memory of her husband Eugene, deceased mother, father and brothers. She asks for prayers for her family, for a special intention, and for improved health for herself. The second is an anonymous donor from Scarborough, Ontario, in thanksgiving for a favour received, for vocations to the priesthood and religious life, and for good health for his extended family. The third is an anonymous donor from Ajax, Ontario, for her sons and grandsons to return to their faith and for the, for the shut-ins who listen to the Mass on TV every day. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate this Eucharist, let us welcome once again God's gift of mercy into our lives. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honour. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Think of us as servants of Christ and stewards of God's mysteries. I have applied this to Apollos and myself for your benefit, brothers and sisters, so that you may learn through us the meaning of the saying, nothing beyond what is written, so that none of you will be puffed up in favor of one against another. For who sees anything different in you? What do you have that you did not receive? And if you received it, why do you boast as if it were not a gift? Already you have all you want. Already you have become rich. Quite apart from us, you have become kings. Indeed, I wish that you had become kings, so that we might be kings with you. For I think that God has exhibited us apostles as last of all, as those sentenced to death, because we have become a spectacle to the world to angels and to mortals. We are fools for the sake of Christ, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are held in honor, but we in disrepute. To the present hour, we are hungry and thirsty. We are poorly clothed and beaten and homeless. And we grow weary from the work of our hands. When reviled, we bless. When persecuted, we endure. When slandered, we speak kindly. We have become like the rubbish of the world, the dregs of all things to this very day. I am not writing this to make you ashamed, but to admonish you as my beloved children. For though you might have 10,000 guardians in Christ, you do not have many fathers. Indeed, in Christ Jesus, I became your father, through the gospel, the word of the Lord. Thanks. 
The Lord is near to all who call on him. The Lord is near to all who call on him. The Lord is just in all his ways and kind in all his doings. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. The Lord is near to all who call on him. He fulfills the desire of all who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him. But all the wicked he will destroy. The Lord is near to all who call on him. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord, and all flesh will bless his holy name forever and ever. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. One Sabbath, while Jesus was going through the grain fields, his disciples plucked some heads of grain, rubbed them in their hands, and ate them. But some of the Pharisees said, Why are you doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? Jesus answered, Have you not read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God and took and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priests to eat, and gave some to his companions. Then Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. As in yesterday's reading, today we learn more about who this Jesus is. If you remember yesterday, Jesus compared himself to the bridegroom at a wedding banquet. He is God's joy shared with humanity. It's impossible to be gloomy or to fast in his presence. And he brings something new into history. He's that new wine, something not the same as the Jewish tradition that he was part of, but something in continuity with it. Today, Jesus once again meets the Pharisees as he's walking through the grain fields with his disciples. Once again, the Pharisees question him over the interpretation of the law. For some might have considered it unlawful 
to pluck and rub and eat grain on the Sabbath. It would have been seen perhaps as a form of work. And Jews are forbidden from working on the Sabbath since the Sabbath is a day of rest dedicated to God. In fact, both Jesus and the Pharisees were very concerned about how to interpret the Jewish law, how to interpret the Jewish law in changing circumstances and outside of the strict temple practice. And that's why we often hear about these discussions on the interpretation of law between Jesus and the Pharisees. In response, in Jesus' response to the Pharisees about what is lawful to do on the Sabbath, Jesus retorts that even David and his companions, when they were hungry, entered a part of the temple that was not lawful for them to enter and ate the bread reserved solely to the priest. In other words, Jesus tells his Pharisee friends, there's a scriptural precedent for doing what we are doing. When David was hungry, like Jesus' own disciples, David unlawfully ate the bread of the presence. And so it's permissible for his disciples to eat the grain on the Sabbath. But then Jesus adds, almost like an afterthought, a very strong statement. He says, the Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. The Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. Now, this is quite a statement. Because only God is the Lord of the Sabbath. Only God has power over the Sabbath. And now Jesus is claiming a great deal of authority as the Lord of the Sabbath. In a way, he's saying, I'm the one who decides about what is lawful and unlawful. The law is subject to me. I'm not subject to the law. So Luke is making a strong Christological claim about who Jesus is. Right? He is God's joy shared with humanity. He adds something new and unique to the history of salvation. And he is the Lord of the Sabbath. He is above the law and not subject to it. Now, sometimes I think we can fall into legalism. Maybe like those Pharisees, we want the black and white of the law to guide our actions. And yet we live in a world of gray, when it's often difficult to discern between right and wrong and good and bad, etc. It's not knowing the law, or in our case, knowing the catechism or knowing the rules, and that's not our greatest guide and help. Our greatest guide and help is Jesus himself, for he is the Lord of the Sabbath. It is only with Jesus at the center of our lives that we can navigate the gray zones of the world in which we live. And the good news is that Jesus is willing to be welcomed into our lives, right? As the psalm said, near to all who call on him. He makes himself available to us in our ecclesial communities, in our communities of love and fidelity, in covenantal relationships. Jesus is available to us in the word and in his sacraments. And for this, we rejoice. Let us place our prayers and petitions for this assembly and for the whole world before our gracious God who hears us. That the church, in its mission to make Jesus the center of our lives, may remain faithful to his word, we pray to the Lord. Lord that all those who hunger and thirst for justice may be satisfied, we pray to the Lord. Lord that our civic leaders will always work to promote the common good, we pray to the Lord. Lord that those who are sick in mind or body may be comforted, we pray to the Lord. Lord that those who have died will find eternal rest in the Lord of the Sabbath, we pray to the Lord. Lord Good and loving God, hear the prayers we make before you. 
We make them through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to the Almighty God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of the Church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation, through Christ our Lord. And so in the company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and without joy and with joy we proclaim. Holy. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Michael, St. Basil, St. Dominic, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, with the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Would those of you at home join with me now in this prayer for the dying? O oh God, most kind, the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation, whose will it is that no one who believes and hopes in you should perish. With your boundless mercy, look with kindness on your servants, for true faith and Christian hope commend them to you. Come to them in your saving power, and because of the passion and death of your only Son, be pleased to grant them remission and pardon of all their sins, so that their souls, when they leave this life, cleansed of every stain by the blood of your Son, may enter into life everlasting. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O oh Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects may grow. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel. Thanks. Our thanks to three donors. The first is Connie from North Bay, Ontario. The second, an anonymous donor from Scarborough, Ontario. And the third, an anonymous donor from Ajax, Ontario. And it's their generous contributions that made the televising of today's Mass possible. On behalf of Father Bush, Father Coots, Father Fitzpatrick, Father Donovan, Father Lynch, and all of us here at Daily Mass, our best wishes for a restful weekend. We'll be looking for you all again come Monday. Amen.